Okay, if you could turn to page 12 in your chapter 7 packets, we are going to go over weighted average mixture problems. Now, there's four types of mixture problems we're going to be doing. We're either mixing dry ingredients, liquid, investments, or it would be a motion problem. Okay? So we're going to start off, and the first type we're going to do is the dry mixture. Now, because this is Chapter 7 and we're working on systems of equations, even if you could figure this out without setting up a system of equation, you must, because we are practicing setting up and solving systems of equations. So this first problem says a coffee merchant has coffee beans that sell for $3 per pound and $5 per pound. So I know I'm going to be mixing beans that sell for $3, for $5, and I'm going to create a mixture. So for these problems, I'm going to use these beakers, and these beakers are just going to help me organize the information. Now, you do not have to use my beakers, but if you use my beakers, it will include all the information you need. Okay? So, the first thing I'm mixing is coffee beans that sell for $3 coffee beans that sell for five dollars and then I'm gonna have a mixture now two things I'm gonna put in the beaker one is the cost per unit I'll rewrite that so it's clearer cost per unit now the cost per unit of three dollar coffee beans is three dollars the cost per unit of $5 coffee beans is $5. It tells us the two types are to be mixed to create a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds of a mixture that will sell for $4.50. So the cost of the mixture is $4.50. Okay, so this is the quantity down here, where the top row is cost per unit, the bottom is quantity. Okay? So, how many $3 beans am I going to mix? We don't know, so I'll put an X. How many of the $5 are we going to mix? We don't know, so I'm going to put a Y. But I know I want to end up with a mixture that's 100 pounds. Now, this is going to help me come up with two equations because I need a system of equations. I know X stands for the quantity of $3 beans. Y stands for the quantity of $5 beans. So I have defined my unknowns by using the beakers. If you choose not to use the beakers, you actually have to write that out. Okay. I first do what I call my quantity equation. And that's X plus Y equals 100. Right? This plus this equals this. When I mix them together, I get 100 pounds. Now, my other equation is what I call my weighted average equation. I do 3 times x plus 5 times y equals 450 times 100. So I do 3x plus 5y equals 450. And that's how I would set up this problem. Now, I'll solve this one, although on this video I'm not going to solve all of them because I'm really just going to help you set them up. If I multiply my entire top equation by negative 3, I get negative 3x minus 3y equals negative 300. I get 2y equals 150. So that means y equals 75. Well, y is my $5 pound bags. And if this is 75 and it has to add up to 100, that means X, my $3 a pound, we'd have 25 pounds. So the answer is I'm going to mix 25 pounds of $3 beans with 75 pounds of $5 beans to get a mixture that will sell for 450 and be 100 pounds. Okay? Now... The answers to these are all on page 25. So I actually show you all the work 
for 1 through 12 on page 25 to 27. So if you're having any problems, look in your packet on page 25 to 27. Now, I'm going to do number two. So number two, number two says, peanuts are selling, so these are peanuts, are selling for $2. Cashews, so I'm mixing peanuts and cashews. Cashews are selling for $5. And I'm going to create a mixture. Your mixture is always the end one. 20 pounds, which sells for $2.75. Okay, I don't know how many peanuts. I don't know how many cashews. Remember, this is your quantity equation. This is your cost per unit up top. Okay, so my quantity equation is x plus y equals 20. Then I do 2 times x plus 5 times y equals 275 times 20. So 275 times 20 is 55. Now, I'm not going to solve this for you. You should be able to solve it yourself. But what I do want to point out to you is, if you look at this cost per unit, 275, it's right in between 2 and 5. And if you look at the first problem we did with $3 coffee beans and $5 coffee beans, the mixture, 450, was in between the 3 and the 5. Okay? That is the norm. But it doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes, and if we look at number three, sometimes you mix things that when mixed can't necessarily have a unit cost. So, this says Becky has $2.35 in nickels and dimes. So I know I'm mixing nickels and dimes. Okay? She has 33 coins in all. So she has a total of 33. I don't know how many nickels. I don't have any dimes, many dimes. This is the quantity. And this is the unit cost. Now a nickel is 5 cents. A dime is 10 cents. Now the mixture they tell us is two dollars and thirty-five cents. Now I want you to think about that. Is two dollars and thirty-five cents in between five cents and ten cents? No, it's nowhere near in between. It's much, much, much larger. And the reason is this is already a total. So I'm going to put a box around it because I'm not going to multiply thirty-three times two thirty-five because 235 is not a unit cost. And the reason is you can't take part of a dime and part of a nickel and crea create something called a denickel. You can't take part of a dime and part of a nickel and create something called a nime, which is going to sell for seven and a half cents. That doesn't make any sense. So when you have something like nickels and dimes or student tickets and adult tickets, they can't actually be ripped up and pasted together to create something that has a unit value. You have to be given the total cost. So my two equations here will be, well, my quantity equation is x plus y equals 33. And then I do 0 0.05 times x plus 0 0.10 times y. And instead of saying 235 times 33, I recognize 235 is already a total. Okay? So I did want to go over that because that is different. Okay? Now, that's it for the dry mixtures. Now we're going to do some liquid mixtures. So let's look at page 13. And we'll look at number 5. Now, number five says a chemist has, okay, we're mixing a 25% acid solution with a 50% acid solution, and we're ending up with a mixture. 
So this is my 25% acid. This is my 50% acid. And I'm going to end up with a solution that is 35% acid and I get 200 milliliters. So a 25% acid solution. Instead of having a unit cost, I'm going to call this a concentration. So it's a 25% concentration. This is a 50% concentration. I want to mix them together to create a 35% concentration. Notice 0.35 is in between 25 and 50. 0.25 and 0.50. So this truly is a mixture and I'm going to say for my quantity equation this is X, this is Y. So I don't know how much of 25% or how much of 50% but I end up with 200 milliliters. So my quantity equation is X plus Y equals 200 and then I do this times this plus this times this equals this times this. So 0.25X plus 0.50y equals 0.35 times 200. Okay, and then again, I'm letting you solve these on your own. Now, let's look at number eight. Number eight talks about juicy juice. And it says, juicy juice claims to have the most juice, but it only has 20% juice. How much pure juice needs to be added to three quarts of juicy juice to create a mixture that's 40% juice? So I have juicy juice, and I'm mixing it with pure juice, and I'm creating a mixture. Juicy juice is 20%. Pure juice is 100%. We'll discuss that in a second. And the mixture I want is 40%. So this would be 0.20, 20%. That's the concentration. 100% is 1, and 40% is 0.4. It tells me I have 3 quarts of juicy juice. I don't know how much pure I'm going to add and I don't know how much of the mixture I'm going to have. So this ends up being my quantity equation is 3 plus x equals y because I'm adding this plus this equals y and this times this plus this times this equals this times this. So 0.2 times 3 plus 1x equals 0.40y. And that is my equation. And again, you can look at page 26 for the work. I do it on page 26. But what I want to go over is this concept of pure juice. So pure juice, pure anything, pure anything is either going to be 100% or zero. So in this particular case, we wanted to increase the concentration of juice. So we added pure juice. Well, suppose juicy juice was 20% and you wanted to create a 10% juice mixture. You might add pure water. Now, pure water may be 100% water, but it's 0% juice. So if I added pure water in this example, I would make the pure water zero. So keep in mind, pure can either be zero or 100%. Okay. So that's the end of this video. I'm going to do another short one on interest problems after this.